Well, I think they do that a lot. I mean, there's an awful lot of, there's always the idea that they're going to hold certain things back. And I'm not even talking about the big cover-up. You know, I mean, if they saw something of um, significant national security interests, then they might pass on that one. Uh, that's that's one thing. But this is a whole separate mission. That's, um, I think they've kind of played out all of their um, get-out-of-jail-free cards for the, uh, you know, for covering the stuff up. And all it took was for the Perseverance crew to start immediately posting images before anybody could mess with them. And then you know, they're kind of committed. And, oh, I just checked their site. Richard, I, I hate... I hate to correct you, of course, but I, I think this, uh, unless you think they're wrong, that I just picked an image that this image was acquired on April 1st, 2021, Sol 39, at the local mean solar time, which I assume means on Mars, of 14.24.05. So there's uh, this image acquired. That doesn't sound like they're talking about the time that it was uplinked to the satellite. It yeah, but, like they, the uh, they but hang on. I, I will contradict your contradiction. <laughs> <laughs> because I looked this uh, afternoon. I was hoping you would. Well, this afternoon I was looking to see whether I could get actual Earth correlates. In other words, when sure. you when you say to someone, "This frame was taken on Sol 39," who knows what that mm -hmm. means? What you want is an Earth date. You know, on Earth at that afternoon, it was Sol 39 on Mars. It was March something or other on Earth, or April something or other, right? They posted a whole right. bunch of new frames. I'm looking in particular when this montage of all sky images was taken. I wanted to know the corresponding Earth date because it was Sol 35. And right there they have a frame which they posted today saying April 3rd, Sol 35 uh, on Mars. And it, it can't be because the other frames are several days back and they're Sol 35 on March 30th. So no, that's not the, they're doing everything they can again to confuse us outside citizen scientists so we can't penetrate the layers. Remember, they all carry around this little book of poetry by a gal named Emily Dickinson. Yeah, occasionally those things might just be mistakes. People make office mistakes. That's not a mission mistake. This is that's a somebody that's transcribed seven billion dollar mission. It's all done by computer. No one is logging I'm this. Sure this no one is logging this by hand with a little notepad and a little steno sitting there with her glasses, you know, framing her blonde hair. This is all being done digitally, automatically. So they're deliberately screwing up the numbers so we can't figure out the geometry. Not everybody, the bad guys. The good guys have given us incredible clues. And I'm just saying it's time for the good guys to hold a major press conference and blow the doors off this and let's get on with history because the human race is in horrible peril because we're all fractionated and we need to be together. Okay, time for the Czechoslovakians to take over, I guess. <laughs> I, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a Roswell reference. If anybody remembers the original Roswell TV show, when the um, when the uh, the girls were trying to talk about their boyfriends in public, they referred to them as Czechoslovakians, so that nobody would think they were talking about space people. So every time you every time you reference the uh, our new friend in Czechoslovakia, I'm thinking maybe that's a cover term. Maybe he's not actually in Czechoslovakia. Maybe he's um, mimicking the um, line out of Roswell. Well, I just want to know how did he create absolutely perfectly extraordinary color real color including uh, the, the banding the fringing and all that out of black and white images when he claims remember what he's claiming that he extrapolated mm -hmm. from the GoPro color frames of the descent that's what he's claiming uh, I could believe that I could believe that I took one of the pink ones and I got reasonable color balance out of it based on the fact that we've got ground truth you know we have seen color photos of the ground and we're um, you know so we know what color the ground is because that's something that although they don't seem to know from one camera to the other but you know what I mean the uh, basic color palette there is software that can do that I don't have it but I'm sure that Andrew has seen it 
uh, the Da Vinci suites will do that kind of thing. You can just pick another palette. You can put so they could pick a ground image picture that's got the right browns and so forth in it, and it will transfer those values I'm to just, the grayscale. As a reporter, image. it's pretty good. It works pretty good. As a reporter, I'm just telling you, he claims his only source of color for this gorgeous seven-mile suspended panorama was the little GoPro frame. GoPro frames, again like Kleenex. That's not the name of the camera. Yeah. Um, that were shot by this other downward looking camera during the entry, descent, and landing. And, uh, you know, when someone publishes something really amazing, you should listen carefully mm -hmm. to when they tell you how they did it. I don't think he's telling us how he did it because I don't think he can, because I think he's a secret leak from inside JPL pretending to be an amateur, but leaking us astonishingly confirmatory data to fit into the queue of all the programs we've been building to flesh out the evidence supporting this outrageous but real hypothesis. It's possible. It's possible. Okay, we got about a couple of minutes just, to the yeah. bottom of the hour, and when we come back, I want to have Bob come on with the new images, and I want Ruggiero to narrate the images that he sent to Cynthia which she has now been able to post. So we'll have a very busy half hour. And then we're going to reserve some time at the end for the, <clears throat> pun, pun intended, blue sky part of the conversation. What the hell is this going to mean? However it comes out. And will it have, in fact, a Chinese label on it? Well, that's a cliffhanger. It's very, <laughs> very, very silent. Okay. Richard, I think oh. I'm just looking through those. I don't want to get ahead, but I'm just looking through one of the images that really uh, caught my eye is in Andrew's section, and it's the color balance uh, or calibration target. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you've already talked about that this morning or if no, you're going to no, talk no, about we, that we soon. No, no, we didn't but, talk about the color, so we can do that when we but, come back. Hold it that's there. absolutely key. Hold it there. You're on the other side of midnight. My guests are too numerous to mention, but they're on the website. All their background, their bios. We have a multi-variegated band of different expertise, experience, perspectives, and background. Just the kind of thing you need when you're trying to apprehend the magnitude, let alone the reality of an extraterrestrial civilization that could, in fact, in our model, be the progenitors of our own. You're on the other side of midnight. My name is Richard C. Hoagland. We shall return. The other side is midnight.com. Tune in to listen to Richard C. Hogland and his fascinating guests. 
support the broadcast and don't miss another groundbreaking conversation. Join Club 19.5 to get access to exclusive member benefits. Listen to past episodes anytime on any device. Search the archives of over 180 episodes. Membership costs $9.95 a month, 33 cents a day. Talk radio at the cutting edge of science and thought. The other side of midnight.com. Welcome back, everyone. Last half hour for this Saturday night, Sunday morning edition of The Other Side of Midnight. Um, Tim, I think you're first on the runway. You wanted to say something about the color calibration chart for the Mass Cam Z. We talked about the symbols. We talked about its utility. We, I don't think we talked about what you're going to talk about. So the floor is yours. Well, thank you, but shouldn't... Andrew introduced it. It is his poster after. Oh, he already did. He already did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, you know, the first thing going back to my experience from, you know, video making videos is when you take a video camera out on Earth, you set up a white piece of paper or white chart and you take a white balance and therefore you calibrate the camera to the environment, the lighting and everything else. So it's no surprise that on the mask cam, they have this little target. Um, to switch on the camera, point the camera at the target, and therefore you can calibrate the camera settings according to temperature, any moisture, anything else that's happening, to something, give a, a set of values you know, and then you can accurately make sure that the camera's working accurately. But what, what is interesting to me is instead of using a, uh, a sort of a grayscale from you know black to white or from you know a set of color palettes from you know you just name it name it you know red green and blue anything from red green and blue to something which is sort of you know millions of colors they could have chosen the colors they've chosen on the mask cam target seem to be very very selective obviously maybe there are you know specialists that know a far greater amount of information more than i do about this but it just struck me is why would they use these sort of small number of rather turgid looking colors instead of using what we perceive to be, you know, a far greater array of colors that we'd see on Earth. So that what I'm saying is cut the long story short, is the colors that the limited number of turgid colors they've used, in my opinion, would limit the expectations and also the end results of the final colors we see on the photographs they create. So is it any wonder we're seeing butterscotch or vegetable soup color photographs? Yeah, but all the color data is in the images. You just have to know how to get to it with the right algorithm. Yeah, but the color target, the target is the key. The key is, I mean, you know, we can make, I can, as Ron said earlier in Da Vinci, I have a Da Vinci suite myself, it is, as does Kintia. But the point is that you can make any color, any color you want. Sure. But the point is you, you need to know the key. What is the key? Well, how do you get there? So why would they limit themselves with this little target and these, you know, eight colors? I'm just counting. Yes, eight colors. And also the strange symbols in between. <laughs> yeah, Ron, Ron, uh, Andrew went through the symbols. Uh, one of them actually looks like the man and woman on the pioneer plaque that Eric Burgess and I were involved in vis-a-vis -vis Carl Sagan. Uh, it's almost like a greeting to <clears throat> ancient Martians, ancient ancestors. I'm wondering, Andrew, if this this little color calibration thingy is being changed from the laboratory standard because of the bizarre filtering effects of the remaining glass. Well, I don't know if I can really speak to that, Richard, but it is a very good question. I, I mean, I find the symbology, I mean, I think you're I think we're all right. <laughs> I just, but I find that the symbol, you know, actually what I find very curious about this little symbol is the concentric circles with the, um, 
if in the middle it's just this target thing but anyways that's probably for another day but it's very strange it reminds me of that remember that old well 60s, you're you're obviously making an allusion to the geometry of the dome we now have in photographs yeah exactly and 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 time travel you know like this remember the the time travel it oh, was a tv show was time oh you mean oh yeah the uh what they time tunnel that was the name of the show Irwin yeah, allen's just... abc time tunnel yeah and, and it just i'm like am i looking back at the 60s with this whole <laughs> rotation of of the beginnings of life in the solar system two worlds one big what's the messaging here but in terms of the colors I don't know. It's, it is very curious, like Tim said. I'm, you know, I, think you might... I, I, I think Tim is on to something, because, yeah, Tim, if, if I'm understanding you correctly, by choosing these dumb and limited colors, if you calibrate all your really incredibly rich images to these colors, you wind up obscuring all the interesting stuff automatically. Am I getting yes, it right? Yes, uh, and I wonder if, it, if it's like the... It's like the idiot key. So, you know, if we're going to show these amazing high-powered photographs to, you know, the scientists and the, and the people we want to show the images to on Earth, you know, the NASA executives and so on, and the people controlling those, then we show the, the real calibrated images. But if you want to show them to the public, then we just point the camera at this, key, this uh, calibration target, and it instantly dumbs down all the high-powered visual information into some, into what we're seeing, which is the butterscotch vegetable soup. Unless you have a little clever back door into the real imaging data, which we do. See, again, I see in this whole NASA thing what I call is a series of titration experiments. Titration for you folks who've forgotten high school chemistry is you basically distill stuff down to the essence. What they've tried to do in every way shape and form is to distill their audience from a large audience which would be excited and jumping up and down and going oh my god look at that to a tiny 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 restricted restricted handful of i mean one of those press conferences i think it's the one andrew that you signed off on early and missed the good stuff they had like forty thousand people on a planet of seven billion people because they didn't put it live on NASA television. So they've done everything they can to whittle their audience away to nothing, meaning they've thrown away their ability to get money out of Congress, the normal channel, unless, of course, in the long term, they don't give a damn because once you unveil on whatever ritual calendar with whatever precepts around it that you're following, the reality of what's really there, money will be no object for NASA ever more plus you got elon musk and all the industrials who are going to be industriousists or however you say it industrialists <laughs> who are going to go up there and, and start industrious know, industrialists well, there you go <laughs> i'm glad you brought up uh, a musk because somehow we <clears throat> got to get this to him i mean remember he's the guy who thinks i'm schizophrenic along with joe rogan um rogan is not called by the way even though you and laura tried your your level best to get him to uh, answer uh, nothing and I think they're I, I think it's all part of the slow release time release aspirin thingy I don't think the phone's gonna ring anytime soon because remember what Sagan said to Brandenburg he said dr. Brandenburg it's not whether you're right or wrong sir you're not even in the conversation we are not in the conversation the folks inside are, and in their hands, again, I don't want to overstate it, but this is my heartfelt belief, on Reincarnation Sunday, this is the reincarnation of the human race. Nothing more, nothing less. It needs a few good men and women in JPL to stand up for the truth. That's all. That's all you're being called to do. Stand up for the truth and save humanity. And we'll come visit you in prison. You're such a downer sometimes. <laughs> They're not going to prison. It's all about. It's all about timing. No, I don't think so either. But getting. But that's what the. Uh, that's what they worry about. It's money. Most normal people care about having money. 
you know, you, an, you don't you don't think that if well, some hero stood up at JPL, I, I, I didn't. Gonna, I said I, normal people. I was going to yes, say I Ron, Ron is definitely not normal. You don't think that if someone, a group of people, it has to be more than one. It's got to be a covey. It's got to be a band of brothers and sisters. If they stood up and told yeah. the truth, you don't think day after tomorrow they would have any job they wanted with Musk? Any job? Come on. Or Bezos? Or the Europeans? I mean, we now have a right. no single point failure space effort a la planet Earth. NASA's no longer the only game in town. Speaking of which, are the Chinese still hurtling around? Mars? Yes, they're waiting, they're waiting, they're okay. waiting. What are they well, waiting for? Well, not only is this day reincarnation day, but it is also the Chinese uh, national holiday for tomb sweeping. So maybe tomorrow we'll see something. Wait, wait, it's a oh. holiday for what? National to tomb sweeping. You don't know about that? I have no idea what you're talking about. And most of the audience probably won't either. I've heard of it. Explain it to him. Well, I don't know very much about it either, but <laughs> it did catch my the, ear yesterday. That this, the ancient... Yeah. The, so the this, is, this yeah, is part the of their ancestor group. worship and you sweep out the tomb? Or exactly. This, oh, okay, okay. It just yeah. happens to coincide yeah. with the Easter Sunday. The part of it was, this year. with his wonderful British accent, I didn't understand his term, tomb sweeping. It sounded like something else. How do you say it? Tomb sweeping. Tomb. Okay. Tomb sweeping. There we go. Okay. All what, right. But what did you say? I heard you say tomb sweeping. Maybe it's my headphones. Who knows? Anyway, so that's what. The, no. So this is National Ancestor Day for terrestrial civilization that's at least much older, five thousand years old. At a minimum. At minimum. 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 Right. Yeah, I mean, they have a lot of pyramids that don't look very modern there as well, so I no. guess it's at least 5,000. Mm. Okay, we got about 15 minutes till the end of the show. This is free for all time. I want your most outrageous thoughts, A, where this can go, its implications for humanity, and B, what's it going to take to get a few good men and women to simply do the right thing, given that we have the evidence. They have the evidence. And whatever software Ron and I were able to bring to this, and Bob, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Bob, but, you know, I'd like to spend more time on what this means than more details of data. So I want you to shift into your philosophical modes, everybody, and think about the most far out amazing things this can trigger in a human race desperately in need of a rope to hang on to. Hmm. Well, if you want a um, terrestrial uh, parallel, so Egypt is moving its royal pharaohs from oh, their resting place. Oh, I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. Oh, you were? Oh, okay. I, no, 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 it's fine. No, no, because I've, I've got a guy on, on, the, on the Great Pyramid and the pyramids in Egypt and all that. And we're going to talk about the procession and the ancestors and the mummies and all of that. And I'm also going to, oh, I, I should tell everybody now. There's a part two to what I've been quietly working on at Jezero, and I'm going to unveil it tomorrow night. There's more than just the dome, and I want to leave it there because I've kind of hinted at it over the last couple of three weeks. I've now got absolutely rock solid evidence, and it's redundant evidence, and it's going to blow your socks off. I warn you, you're going to have to replace your sock drawers because it's so robust and solid and incontrovertible. And it will be unveiled tomorrow night when we talk about the Giza Plateau and the mysteries of the pyramids of Egypt. Just by coincidence, of course. Yeah, so above mm -hmm. as below, right, Richard? I mean, yep. this is stunning. Yeah. This is an on Easter weekend. I mean, I, I you know. It's very interesting. All of these things are converging, and something's moving towards a con something's moving towards a conclusion well, of sorts or a ragged Well, it's the resurrection of humanity. Nothing more, exactly. nothing less. It's our rebirth as humans. We're not living tonight on planet Earth a human existence. You realize that? Just look around. This is not the way humans should live. And I've said for a long time, it's because the physics is broken. This is the way. The one magic bullet that will fix so much stuff 
starting with how closely related we all are. Everybody who hates everybody else, you know, Trumpists and Libs and Chinese and Germans and Hottentots or whatever, we are so much more in common than against the extraordinary unknown that awaits us out there, which now comes with a face, with technology, with a history, and a legacy, if we're smart enough to seize this moment. Richard, can I uh, Anything, anything, by all means. Yeah. So, uh, Kim Thier has um, graciously uh, put up the, the images uh, which I've given her earlier on, and she's been working hard uh, this evening. Okay. But um, to your statement of, uh, you know, how can we get people to take note, perhaps if a mechanical engineer could have a look at uh, my image number eight in particular, which I call the engine block. So we're looking at stuff on the ground now okay. from uh, from the bunker. Have you uh, added it? So what I've done is I did a sketch overlay of um, what I call the block, and you can see some drill holes. Uh, there's like a triangular section at the top. There's um, like a linear you know, triangular section at the bottom. Um, and it shows quite clearly so the detail that doesn't look natural. Now wait, this this is I I recognize it. this is a perseverance image. No, no, it's oh sorry, yes, it is. It's, it's correct. Yeah, I've seen this thing okay. from from Percy in the in the Mascan Zoom, mm. right there at the base of the uh, so-called uh, Kodiak Temple. It's on the ridge between us and the temple. Mm -hmm. Those aren't so rocks. Yeah, I know. Well, can you see image nine? But I've done a little sketch. I just overlaid some Going. papers on my screen. I only get four. I've tried refreshed a couple times. Okay. Looking at nine. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. Because obviously not everyone can see this stuff because it doesn't jump out of their eyes. But when you put the overlay on, you can see all the little holes that look like, a bit like uh, Brian Forrester's drill hole work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else can I see? I, I was really just drawn to the, the little triangle at the top right hand side of the feature. Oh yes, yes. See that? That's still like it. That's it looks like a little shard of glass. Mm -hmm. It's even got well, the right I'm, color. I, yeah, I'm, it, well, the, the colors are interesting. There's definitely like a, um, a spectrum of features going through the colors, but also the bottom of, of the feature, the engine block mount. Does that make sense when you take a car apart? And you can see like this triangle with a circle in the minute, middle and two left hand forks sticking out. I'm going to do some better images for you, Richard, but uh, these these give away enough. Well, look over on the right hand side. Look at the wires. Wires? You see the wires on the right hand side toward the upper part? They're going from about the 530 position to the 1130 position. On the right hand side, upper part of your image. On the right. I think I can see something sticking out. You see your, you see your triangle at the top uh, with a hole in it. On, on, on the, on the big object in the center. The yep. point is pointing right at the wires, and they even have shadows. They even look like they have insulation on them. All right, um, I'm sure that will jump out at me. <laughs> <laughs> see, the, this, this illustrates, folks, a lot of, of what we, what we mean when people are not used to looking at ruins you know, broken stuff. Everything we're surrounded by from all our lives is brand new. So maybe Andrew, a sketch or two to match what Ruggiero's gonna do. But I see wires. Yes, there's two other little features. So image um, five and six, again, is backing up the same type of, call it engineering, what appears to be engineering or architecture. So you've got the original image, Five, which is Keith's shot, and then me just doing a, a plain um, photograph with my iPhone, and I um, overlaid my uh, what's that sex square <laughs> ruler? Let's call it that, and it just shows the the um, space, the regular spacings between those features that look like drill holes going across that rock. That's um, mm. see that? Yep. Yep. Okay, uh, I wanna I wanna widen out to thirty thousand feet because we're running out of, of runway here. Okay, I you. want more people to think about what because normally Ruggiero, people look at this yep. and they go, "Oh, I wonder what Kim Kardashian's doing." 
<laughs> how do we get people to understand the leverage that this gives ordinary people to create a planet which is human? The planet tonight is not human. Look around. Look at look at what happened just a couple days ago in Washington D.C. That poor kid, that utterly distracted, out of his mind kid who thought that was the way to solve his problems, to murder two other people. He tried to anyway, and then murder himself by jumping out with a knife and basically committing suicide by cop. There's something so wrong with so much that this could begin to fix by giving people a sense of community against an unknown that is bigger than they can possibly yet imagine. If we look, look at art, Cynthia uh, said it about the other show. Uh, on my images um, three and four, I, I think I'm seeing a cat, so I've drawn that. But what it speaks of is that there's something out there that's greater than ourselves, and we need to take some time to you know, reflect and have a look at this. And I think it, you know, with, the, with what's happened with the pandemic, uh, me being a musician, we, we've kind of lost our art. And when we reflect back on, on, on those things that lift our spirit, that's what gives us, uh, you know, the, the driving force in life. And I think a lot of people are un unconnected to that. So by doing what we're doing with this research right now, uh, coming from multiple aspects, science, art, medicine, etc., we're, we're fusing together a field that will give people hope, I think. And, and they can see where our real ancestry comes from, because it's, it's just detailed there out in everything we've come up with tonight and what everyone's displayed this evening. I think people need to reflect on that. Okay, who else? We got a few minutes here. Come on, don't be shy. Well, Richard, I think that mm. if we have allies um, in NASA, and if they are listening, then uh, let's join hands and do something together and show us, give us something. What would you like to see happen next? If, if we have brave souls who decide to take history in their own hands and make it, make it what we need, what could they do that would change everything and move us in the right direction? Ron, that's a question for you. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I think they should, uh, they could make a sudden reassessment of something that is part of the, because there's a whole mishmash of uh, incorrect data that has accumulated out of this. And I think there are lingering lies and they could they could dispense with a couple of those and it's I mean it's rich uh, Richard and I had a bit of a tiff about this the other day <laughs> just, but I'm I'm thinking uh, you know it's just, uh, it's a win-win as far as I see they could they could do a little house cleaning and here I thought our of, tiff was uh, an image file okay go ahead oh uh, oh boy there's that yeah I uh, I'd make a pitch for admitting that the atmosphere is not the way that they have portrayed it in the past. I mean, they could, if something like that, you can even go halfway to the truth. I mean, it's just the idea of just unfreezing the settings, you know, because it was, they made an arbitrary assessment. I have the feeling that there's a whole bunch of parameters like that that have been set for Venus. With all the missions and everything else where they go hang around and take a couple pictures and a lot of measurements and then they still are the the academics still argue with each other so uh you know they could they could give us some solid truth on some of that and just add to the conversation i mean i'd like to say well they should just admit everything right now but then you get into a deep jeopardy situation you know it's like i have a um uh, there's been a lot of talk in politics lately about the circular firing squad that overly obsessed groups get, you know, they start picking off each other. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, in academia, the equivalent thing is a circular hiring squad because they, uh, that's what peer review really is. Everybody takes pot shots at each other to see if they're, if you're acceptable to join their circle. And that's, that's why it's a screening process. Well, and remember, they, uh, remember know, Sagan to Brandenburg, it's not whether you're right or wrong, sir. You're not even in the conversation. Right. So, right. Richard, sure. they need they need to extend the circle. They need to make it a bigger target. They or, or make the target really wide, like their their little um, mass cam Z uh, color thing. They, they have to bring us all in, and they have the keys to that, because we're being reflected back. And as I think Ruggiero said, 
look, we've lost our art because we've misplaced our soul. And you and NASA can help us get back there. You've got, you're right at the threshold. They're doing it in Egypt. They're doing it in many places, and we're doing it right now on Easter. So, well, you go, you go on the JPL website, and I've been reading their biographies, the rank and file, the people that actually brought this technological miracle to fruition. So tonight, we're looking at stunning images of a dome on Mars because of the genius of all these young people. And they're young people. Yeah, they are. And they're all incredibly idealistic. They wanted to work for NASA to serve humankind. They want to break down the barriers of knowledge and ignorance to move humanity forward. And they're stuck because they themselves have been lied to. What I'd like is one or two of them to come on the other side of midnight and just talk about this mission and this data and how it changes everything. I'm going to make, by the way, a fearless scientific prediction. I don't think the Ingenuity helicopter is ever going to fly. You know why? Because it could bring the whole damn dome in their minds down upon the rover. And they dare not have that happen at the very beginning of their mission. It'll be Do you mean Richard's S simply because of the because of the noise, the vibration. If yes. the Martian atmosphere, no, go ahead. No, I, I, if I, if I was them, I'd risk it. But I know what you're saying, and it's perfectly plausible. Why would you risk your entire two point seven billion dollar mission? Remember, they keep saying, well, "Oh, it's only a demonstrator. It's only a demonstrator." Why would you risk everything else they're doing, and this incredible outpost with all these cameras and all? I mean, they have an X-ray probe called uh, a Pixel on the end of the arm that can literally look at this glass and with x-ray diffraction in the Martian deserts on this lake floor they can tell exactly what it's made of which will then tell them what the dome overhead is made of and they would risk all that because of the vibrations caused by the engine of little Ingenuity's rotors? I don't think so. I could be wrong. I could be wrong about mm -hmm. most of this stuff but not that. The mission Richard, is too... I think that they, they have those dust devils that also have a lot of force, and uh, I, th I think that the little rotors from this little guy are not going to do any more than the dust devils would. I think it would fly, if it can fly. But uh, it would be yeah, very that's... selective in what it points at. Mm. I think you're right. Uh, if anybody wants to take a quick look at the last image in my s section, it's a picture taken by the supercam, which I thought Richard was going to talk about. That's why I stuck a thing in there. But it's, um, it, uh, yeah, it's a close-up. And so I cleaned it up a little bit. And it's a very interesting-looking whatever it is. It, hey, makes, it reminds me of, yeah, hey, sorry, we're out of time. We're yeah. run out of runway. To be continued tomorrow with this amazing connection that I found between Yezero and Giza. Oh, you got to see this. And we'll talk about it all okay, amongst wait. ourselves next week. So until next week, same time, I'm sorry, tomorrow night, same time, same bat channel. Remember, third star on the left, straight on till morning. Good night, everyone. And look up a bit. It's about to change up there and down here. Till tomorrow.